Welcome to Let's Talk Bach. It's Thursday, 9.36, uh, but you can already see the clock time right there. And I wanted to say thanks. Thanks for tuning in. It's probably not the same time where you're from, but I appreciate it. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Baccarat. You with me? Okay, cool. This one is gonna be about chasing pandas, okay? Now, not literally, we're not poaching anything, we're not skiing or anything. But, no, yeah, okay, so we're gonna be chasing them and we're gonna be slaughtering them and winning money from them, okay? But don't get it twisted. If you're a gambler, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, let's get right into it. Scoreboard time, break down. Let's do this at Let's Talk Block. Okay, so, this is going to be a quick video uh, where I'm recording the screen on my tablet with this scoreboard. Uh, very simple. I hope I'm not shaking the video when I shake the kitchen table because I'm in the kitchen. But anyway, so what you're going to see is a split screen or however I do it post-production where you can see me talking and you can see what I'm working on here. So what I wanted to do was take a white marker on this board here since we don't need any of the... All right, is there a better way of doing this here? So I wanted to fill all this in white right here so I can give myself a little room to work with. Uh, in the future, I think I'll have something a little bit better of an idea rather than wasting my time doing this. So bear with me. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to write this small. So we're gonna use the black. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this strategy right now, uh, stop the video and go check out the other video on how to chase the panda when you're playing Easy Baccarat, okay? And if you need to learn the rules about the game, comment below and maybe I will spend some time going over the rules or I'll just direct you to the video of a, another person's channel that I've seen that actually went over the rules really quickly. Um, it's a how to play Baccarat or how to win something. But I don't know if it necessarily tells you how to win. It just kind of tells you how to play, the rules, the hit schedule, all that good stuff. Anyway, um, so let's get into this one. This is a scoreboard. I'm going to be doing this as often as I can um, just to really nail and drill it in there for you. Well, one or the other. But and I'm just doing what I've been doing once a freaking year, which is reiterating the strategy, uh, which is the panda chase strategy, theory, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have a lot of fun with this. I have fun when I deal the game. I have fun you know, trying to get people to, to bet Panda when the trigger's met. Um, so, once again, if you're not un completely unfamiliar with the um, Panda Chase strategy, I'm going to go over the rule or the trigger, the strat. The way that I play when I want to have fun, when I'm not just chasing a base bet and just trying to read the forecast or um, this, this right here is the forecast, forecast, forecast. So, uh, basically, real quick, when we're chasing panda, when I'm playing the game, if I was to walk up to the table right, say right here, that would have been perfect, right? I'm 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 golden in this little area, and I'll demonstrate why. Now, if I walked up to the table right here and gave up after betting, let's say of the ten hands, because what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and go back. What we're gonna do is we wait for the trigger, and I've done this countless times where I've walked into work during my and my the beginning of my shift. I've looked at all the five seven tables of baccarat tables that we have open and i looked at each scoreboard because there's a big ass tv uh that shows the scoreboard of the of the baccarat table respectively and i'm like wow like there's the trigger you know right here if you wanted to look at what i'm doing on there that's the trigger blue tie simple i get a lot of people that say oh well there there was a tie there was a panda here here we go uh, where is it at oh there's a different there's a different scoreboard that i'll show you another time where there's a tie that happens after a, a banker or a red dot banker wins, and they're like, oh, the panda came right after that. I'm like, okay, I don't care. I wouldn't have bet that panda. I wouldn't even have worried about it. When I come into work or any casino, casino for that matter, I like this strategy of being like, okay, hey, I came into work. I look at the board. Say, say none of this is even there. I look at the board, and I see my trigger met, and I'm like, okay, let's say this hand, this hand. Okay, I can't see shit right now. I'm thinking maybe neither can you guys. So... So, right here, trigger was met. Jeez. I got to figure out how to use this stupid-ass thing. Okay, so right here, the trigger was met. And now let's just hypothetically say that I came in right when it was met, right? And now I bet one hand, two hand, three hand, four, five, six, seven hands. Now, this strategy is very simple. It says that if we 
run in the middle of our chase if we run into another trigger which would be blue player win followed by a tie then we're going to restart that count now if you don't want to if you're like damn i lost seven times um do your thing you know more power to however you want to play the game this is just a very strict disciplined betting strategy i love to have fun with it um i love when people say it doesn't work no no, no shit it doesn't work every time if you think if this worked every time i don't need to re repeat what i've said in past videos just go watch the past videos but if you aren't trying this at least trying this strategy at least having fun with it if you're leaving in a bad mood after you won at the casino just as much as you've, when you've lost leaving in a bad mood, then uh, I got to say there's probably something wrong going on. Um, and try to find the entertainment aspect of gambling if you can. That's just my opinion. But um, so anyways, let's go over this again. So you've seen the trigger, which is blue tie. We start our betting. We're going to be betting 20. Well, in my strategy, the way I bet, I'm going to be betting $25 every hand. I'm not fluctuating that. I'm not upping the bet. There is a future video I want to do where maybe I start off with like $5 on Panda, then go up progressively, like increase my bet to the max, which is usually 100 unless you're on like a high roller table, whatever. But this, very simple, we're betting $25 for 10 hands straight after blue and tie, followed by a tie win. So going back over that, we bet seven times all the way up, up until it hit another trigger, which was right here, okay, there, which was right here. So we restart the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So out of those 17 hands, we hit it, what, three times? Three pandas? So that's very simple. We bet a total of 17 times. We lost 14 of those, but we won three. So if you're familiar with panda, which you should be if you're watching this video and you're trying to learn how to win some money, if you're trying to live me and get some money. But anyway, um, so we won three pandas. Panda pays 25 to 1. So 3 times 25 is an easy 75. Now, we're not saying that that's $75, obviously, because we bet $25. So essentially, that'd be 25 times the $25 payout times three wins of that, right? So all I'm doing is simplifying it or trying to simplify it with 75 units or 75 bets, or whatever, if you will. Because we come here, we see how we lost 14 of those 17, but we won three. So total payouts is, is 75 units minus the 14 units we lost that leaves us with 61 following me we could do this with that 25 times 25 which is 625 times three times that we won which is 1875 Ugh. we could do all that math first and then do the, the subtraction calculation if we wanted but i'm just doing it this way so you can kind of see it in betting units and i do the same I kind of do the same way when I'm when I'm calculating like a tide chase or my, my tie line theory, which I haven't posted anything since my last video or whatever. And I'm just like, God, at work, it is crazy. I've been on a table and where people ask me what you think is going to be, what you think is going to be. And I literally was like, go to that table. And I was like, you want to win 200? Bet 25 on tie. It's a, because it's eight to one. If you didn't already know that, but they win the, they win the hand, they come back, they tip me. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> I was Let's just say I wasn't that surprised calling that tie like that, but we'll get into that tie line theory in another video. For this one, let's get focus back on our three panda wins, 25 to one payout, 75, 75 units. That'd be 75 times $25 that we that we bet, right? So let's go back to our units lost. This is our total units now one. So if we times that by 25, that's going to give us, what did we say, 1875? minus 350 so 15 25 would be our total win for this whole panda chase like i said ideally if i walked into the casino and and let's say let's say i walk into the casino i've already missed Let's say I've already missed this, right? Trigger happened here. I missed, I missed, I missed, I missed. Trigger happened again. I missed that panda. Okay, one, two, three. I missed that panda already, but now I'm only betting seven times. So I bet this. I lost. I bet this. I lost. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, which totals the 10, which fulfills our 10 bets of chasing because I've seen it happen on 11. I've seen panda come on 11, on 12, on 13, 14, 15. The idea is, so, is to prevent myself from betting panda or dragon or tire in any bonus 100% of the hands because I've 
literally dealt to players who played almost my whole shift. Shouts out to you guys. You're pretty much how I stay employed, and I love you all. Like, I love dealing to you guys. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Um, I'm still dealing with the language barrier and getting better at doing that as a dealer. So that's always fun and, and, a, and a, a challenge um, in itself to to get these you know players going and get them to see that, like, I love this. I love this freaking game, and uh, I could talk about it for probably hours. So anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. I hope the math wasn't too confusing. If it is, leave a question below because, like I said, this strategy of betting, um, you can bet however much you want. $10. I've said this before. $10, $5, $1 if your casino allows it. Um, but scale it to your own bankroll, um, and don't get in over your head. Don't make bets. Don't chase losses. Um, this is, like I said, very disciplined. If I went to the casino and I had, you know, four tables and they're all going and I seen the trigger happen on all multiple tables, I may very well look to try to judge which table already has maybe five something pandas or you have to make a decision for yourself. Like, am I going to try to chase more? Is this a really juicy shoe that's going to have even more pandas, um, or more bonuses for that matter? So, um, anyway, thank you. Like I said, thank you again for joining me. Uh, the betting units, like I said, if I need to break it down a little bit more clear, clearly, please comment below. I'd love to hear your input. Um, if you have any questions about it, um, like I said, the math is stays the same. It's simple if you just keep this, the, the betting amount the same on each panda that you're betting for those 10 hands. And yeah, that's, uh, that's one that we demonstrated how it chained, the, the chase chained from one, you know, the seven to the 10. Um, and then we demonstrated how if you were stayed disciplined and you stayed resilient and and sh and strict to this betting, whether you were playing from start to finish with the whole shoe and you were patient, and you're just sitting there and you're like, all right, there's no blue to tie. You were you're you're here, you're here, you're here. If you're taking up a seat on the table and you're not betting, you know they may it may look like you're not you know, but if you're you're waving it off and you're like, no 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 no, no I'm sitting this one out. Or like at our casino, we can bet the minimum of, of five on player, five on banker, and it's almost like saying, hey, can I get a free hand? So, um, yeah, thanks for joining me at Let's Talk Bach. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, comments. There's a guy that deleted his comment. I'm going to shout you out. I'm not sure what your name is. I won't shout out your name. But he said, your strategy is based on patterns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just like, playing Baccarat blindfolded and then I couldn't read the rest of his comment because when I clicked on it it was already deleted so here's my response to you I can play this game blindfolded for sure and I can follow the same strategy just like that I could probably sit at this table for this scoreboard right here and say maybe listen to the players say what was it was it blue was it blue player okay what's the next hand what was it tie okay cool now all I gotta do is count to 10 10 hands blindfolded and play and I would still be hitting this fucking panda. Excuse my language. So I'm not mad. I just had a really good response for you, uh, you know, as I'm typing it. So as I'm talking this out now, I just wanted to give you a shout out. Thanks for the comment. Don't delete it. Like, I need you. I need your comments there. Even if they're negative, even if they're, uh, you know, constructive criticism, I'll take it. I'll take everything. So thank you again for joining me at Let's Talk Bach. If you made it this far, please hit the like and subscribe button. There'll be plenty of more of these reiterations, reiterations of the Panda Chase strategy. And pretty soon here, we're going to get to where I'm actually demonstrating the uh, chase live. Not live, actually, but me actually playing. I may have to get an okay from the bosses at my casino. If they don't give the okay, then you won't ever see me doing it. And I'll probably just make updates of um, progress of what my bankroll looks like. Because I see a lot of people doing that, posting um, their wins and losses, which is, to me, it's not crazy interesting. I'm more interested in how to have fun with this game. You know, because I've I've sit there and I've watched dealt to people who bet their thousands on the base bets and and it's it's grueling. It's a grind, you know, just like any blackjack or any poker game, whatever you're playing. But, um, you know, Shane, if you're out there, I haven't seen you in a while, I, I seen you in a while at the casino, but I wanted to shout him out. One of the coolest guys that I've dealt to. Um, and um, he's actually tested out some of the strategy before, too. He's seen it. He's seen it work. He's seen it not work. He's seen shoes where you got lucky. He's obviously, I've been there with him when it's been unlucky. I think it's hilarious that he's coined me or nicknamed me the Terminator. <laughs> but anyway, thanks again, guys. Tune in for the next episode uh, for when I break down more of these scoreboards and show you just how to chase the uh, panda using the Chanda, pan, Chanda Chase Strategy. Thanks, guys. <laughs>